and it's a time for keynote uh, lecture now. I welcome our keynote uh, speaker, Dr. Natalia Pinila. And for this session, she is going to be uh, talking on uh, OCT in bifurcations. And uh, the moderators for this are Dr. Bahulian, who is a very senior uh, intervention cardiologist and then a very nice person and then excellent uh, 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 imager, like he has a lot of interest in uh, imaging and then he is the head of the head of chairman and head of the cardiovascular center at Anantapuri Hospital, Trivandrum. I request, uh, uh, and then apart from that, we have Dr. Sanjeev Brai, uh, too, and P.K. Shahu and Dr. Vivek Bose, all to moderate this session. And uh, you know P.K. Shahu is a senior consultant, uh, director, intervention cardiology at Apollo Hospital, Bhuvaneshwar. And Sanjeev Brai, we have already introduced, he does not require any <coughs> introduction here. He's from uh, Rajasthan there. And Vivek Bose from our own city here in Madurai, Apollo hospitals, uh, very senior and a very excellent uh, intervention cardiologist here. We have excellent moderators for this session. And with this, I welcome uh, Dr. Natalia Pinilia to take over and uh, Dr. Bahulian to continue with this session. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Salvamani. And uh, I'm so happy that you know I could take part in this wonderful session. And thanks to Salvamani and team for that. Now, coming to the keynote lecture, I'm uh, uh, privileged to uh, invite Dr. Natalia. And uh, she is an uh, assistant professor of cardiology in McMaster University and an interventional cardiologist in uh, uh, Hamilton Heart uh, Sciences. And intravascular imaging, uh, especially uh, optical coherence tomography, I understood that it is a passion. So we are looking forward to uh, your lecture on approach to bifurcation by optical coherence tomography. Dr. Natalia, please. Thank you so much for the kind introduction. And it is a pleasure for me to be in this meeting today. It is hard to talk about holistic approach of OCT after the live case, which was fantastic and show exactly why imaging is important in bifurcation PCI. Um, so let me go over some slides. So I want to do uh, just review the technical details of the OCT that help us to guide bifurcation PCI. Then we are going to, to review what is the bifurcation approach and, um, and with the MLD max algorithm. And then we are going to do a case review that is actually what is going to show us how to use OCT in bifurcation. So just as a reminder, like what, uh, what kind of uh, features do we have in the OCT console to help us to go through these procedures? Uh, and I'm pretty sure many of the people in the panel and the attendees are familiar with these ones, but it's important to remember these. We have two different options to do pullback, the 54 and the 75. And in most of the regular PCIs, this is not important, but it is important in the bifurcation PCI. So when you do a 54 millimeter pullback, the system uh, records 10 frames per millimeter. Uh, it is a longer, it takes longer, three seconds, but you get 540 frames. So this is a very high resolution and this is important in the bifurcation uh, PCI, uh, mostly to assess the rewire in the side branch, uh, what I'm gonna show you in the case review. And then you have the 75 millimeter pullback. This one has less resolution because it's only doing five frames per millimeter, but this pullback takes less time. And this is also important in the live case uh, you guys were talking about the uh, blood clearance of the pullback. And this long pullback is good enough to do most of our PCIs and is way easier to do a great uh, clearance pullback. So because it takes a shorter time, so the contrast doesn't need to be that long in the, in the coronary vessel. Uh, and this uh, resolution is great. All my PCIs, I do it with the 75 millimeter. However, when I'm gonna assess the uh, side branch rewired, I usually use the 54 millimeters. Again, if you do the 54, you have to have higher tolerance to the blood contamination. And what is important and amazing about the OCT, the OCT is gonna do an automatic um, area detection in every single frame. So it means the OCT does a 540 frames measurements or 375 frames measurements in the 75 pullback. 
and put all of these areas together. And that's a reconstruction for you, which is the lumen profile. This is amazing. And this has changed the way we plan PCI because never before we had a tool that put together all the area and give us a real assessment of the whole vessel architecture. So as you see here, this is the real longitudinal view that we had in the OCT, but you have to activate the lumen profile to get this reconstruction. And this is, does not correlate with the real shape and architecture of the vessel, but this one is like a reconstruction. It's like the OCT console straight up your blood vessel and gives you a real assessment. And then with this one, you are confident about all the areas in your vessel and you are able to understand where the stenosis uh, is. So this is important in bifurcation PCI because once you have your longitudinal view and you have your lumen profile, you not only decide the length of your stem, but you detect the side branches. Uh, the system does it automatically for you. I'm gonna show you uh, in the case review. So then you're able to plan exactly the length, the diameter, you're able to do measurements in your proximal reference as well. You need to make sure you have at least eight or 10 millimeters proximal to your bifurcation to do a pot, like an optimal optimization. Uh, so this is gonna help you to plan exactly what size of extent and your strategy. If you use this OCT, you know the stain, you have ready your balloons for post dilatation and your pod balloons. And this is another good feature about the OCT, which is the angioco registration, um, that usually if we had a white dot, uh, this correlates exactly with your cross-sectional image. So you know exactly once you place your lumen profile and your reference, uh, you are able to uh, zoom uh, this angioco registration, and here you have all the markers you're going to use for your bifurcation. So it is very hard to miss the segment when you are aiming to deploy your stem. Uh, also, we have like 3D bifurcation modes and fly through and all of these tools that really help us to understand the relation with the side branch. If you see here in the longitudinal view, automatically, um, these uh, pink dots are placed here in your lumen profile. And this is telling you already that the software detected these are branches were over 1.5 millimeters, helping you to detect these side branches and your optimization technique as well. So now let's do a comprehensive assessment how OCT helps you in bifurcation. So it helps you to identify the strategy and how do you want to optimize your PCI Understanding the geometry, like in the life case uh, we just discussed, exactly what is the angle, what is the carina tip, and then understand what is the relation of the side branches with the main blood vessel for an optimal stem positioning. So, and why OCT impacts like the alcos in bifurcation, especially because you're able to predict the side branch compromise and then uh, I totally agree that provisional bifurcation is the best and the safest technique we have for bifurcations. But in those cases that were just presented, they illustrated that sometimes we have to do double stem bifurcation PCI. And if we have to do it, we better do it right because the outcomes or the non-optimal bifurcation with double stem are quite poor. So this is just to, uh, as a reminder of the MLB mass algorithm that uh, Abbott as a company is now trying to, um, to uh, show to the world how to systematically approach your PCIs. Uh, MLD means morphology, uh, length, and diameter. Uh, in the life case, they illustrated very beautiful that you have to assess your morphology. In the life case, we saw a calcified nodule, deep calcification. So you need to plan what kind of equipment uh, you need to prepare your lesion before you deploy your stem. The OCT gives you like perfect measurements of the length, making sure you deploy your stand in safe landing zones, avoiding lipids that is going to avoid dissections, and avoiding like heavy calcification that is going to drive significant stand under expansion. And then your diameter, because having an underexpanded stand or putting a smaller caliber of stand uh, definitely drives your expansion. In the morphology, it's very important, just quickly remember, as in the last case we saw in the live case, uh, if you have lipid plaque, you are able to uh, consider direct stenting. 
But if you have significant fibroid plaque affecting your lumen area, at least you have to do compliant balloon preparation. Uh, if you have just mild to moderate calcification, most of the times by displacing this non-calcific tissue, you're able to um, gain like a good extent expansion. But if you have severe calcification and nodular calcification, you need to consider more aggressive uh, balloon techniques or atherectomy. And then let's talk about the carina, and this is an amazing uh, insight we have gained with imaging, um, that the deep understanding of the side branch relation uh, with the main vessel has helped us to understand uh, what is the side branch risk to be compromised even after a provisional bifurcation PCI. So in the Caragna tip, angle is below 50 uh, millimeters. And traditionally, we know like the angle is very acute. The chance to displace the carina and occlude the side branch is higher. And then the branch point to carina tip, uh, which is this measurement here, uh, it is below 1.7 millimeters. Uh, is telling you that also the chance that this carina gets displaced after the stent deployment and just reduce the area in the ostium of the side branch is higher. Interestingly, uh, about the plaque morphology that is protected and dangerous uh, in side branch uh, bifurcation assessment, um, we know that the type one, when the plaque is at the opposite side of the side branch, this is the most um, challenging plaque uh, to do a provisional bifurcation PCI without affecting the side branch, because somehow once you deploy the stain, all the energy of the expansion is pushing the side branch. Uh, however, that you will never say that if you don't have this in size, the plaque that is at right at the side branch side is protected because this avoids the energy of the stem uh, displaced like the whole carina tip. So in your planning, as I said before, it's very important you do your length and the pulp balloon. Uh, in my experience, uh, all the double stem bifurcation PCIs in my center are done with OCT. Uh, it is recommended that you had at least eight millimeters in my experience, I try to have at least 10 millimeters. Um, and what is the reason if you deploy your stain and you, and you don't have enough space to do your pot with an eight millimeters balloon, if somehow you end up doing your pot and then you got to cross uh, the carina or you get closer, basically you destroy the whole geometry that you were trying um, to achieve uh, before bifurcation PCI. And with the angioco registration, we know, and we do these procedures uh, in our clinical basis, uh, is sometimes it's very hard to know exactly where the bifurcation is. And this happens, the left main is usually easier uh, in the cuddle views, but when you're doing an um, LAD diagonal bifurcation, a circumflex with an obtuse marginal uh, branch, it's very hard to know exactly where is the, where is the side branch arising. But with OCT, uh, those ones are very well described and uh, with this all angioco registration and the option you have to displace your lumen profile is very hard to miss the ostium. We all know that doing bifurcation PCI, you can do as bad mistake as deploying your side branch stain far from the ostium and missing the real ostium. Um, and then at the end of your PCI, you're going to assess for the optimal results. You're going to assess if you have medial base section. This is the max portion of the MLD max. If you have great opposition and if you have good expansion. Traditionally, uh, we know that um, rewiring the side branch is the most uh, challenging in a double stem bifurcation PCI or a provisional bifurcation PCI that we are able to do um, final kissing balloon. Uh, because it depends on the technique we decide, either it's a DK crash or culotte, you have to get your wire in the right stem strat to achieve what you want to achieve in a double stem bifurcation PCI. Sometimes you prefer a proximal strat, uh, sometimes you rather get a mid to distal strat. And this is impossible to know we are geography. And many times we get this branch, this, um, this wire at luminal to the stem, and we had a lot of trouble. Uh, doing the kissing balloon and the proximal optimization. The bifurcation opposition is critical as well because if we do bifurcation PCI, as the vessel tapers naturally, 
most of our stains proximal to the to the side branch are going to be malapos, and this is when the pot uh, is very important to achieve not only a position but expansion of the proximal uh, segment. So this is usually what happens in the here is the side branch. This is the proximal uh, segment to the side branch, and we usually have some straps that are malapos. Uh, with OCT, you're able to understand whether these ones are a major uh, malaposition or a minor and achieve a great expansion and a position after your stem deployment. If you want to use OCT in your bifurcations, you have to be willing to do at least five pullbacks. Uh, so taking the time to do this five is important uh, to achieve the result. And just to remind you, the October trial, which is a trial that is uh, funded by Abbott, is looking into all type of strategies assessed with OCT. Uh, we don't have the results yet uh, published, but we are gonna have some data soon that explains you exactly the, all the algorithms to go through the bifurcation PCI um, aiming for good outcomes. So OCT in bifurcation helps you to, um, it's, it's actually doing a, a double stem bifurcation PCI, has very high uh, incidence of target lesion failure so we need to aim for an optimal procedure. With OCT, you can assess not only the morphology, length, diameter, complications, apposition, expansion, which is critical in this complex procedure. And OCT may also play a role in understanding the carina geometry, the main vessel relation in the side branch. And sometimes you're thinking you need a double stem bifurcation PCI. And after you do your OCT, um, you decide to do a provisional bifurcation PCI. The OCT side branch rewiring is the most challenging doing an OCT. And if you don't do it right, then you're not able to do your kissing and your report. So uh, this is critical as well. So then let's review a case because it's easier to see it in real life. So this is a case review, a 70 year old male that presented with progressive angina and had a clinically and electrically positive stress test and the myocardial perfusion imaging suggested an LADA ischemia and this is the angiography. So um, I decide to uh, show you this because it's not as complex as the older case or the subocclusive case, but you see a 111 bifurcation um, disease in the LAD with a very large diagonal branch. So um, I don't know what the panel will think, but in this case, uh, looks like we are doing a double stem bifurcation PCI. And if we do, we better do it right. So I'm gonna stop sharing here and I'm gonna share with you the OCT console uh, to show you exactly what we did. So I hope you can see now my OCT console. Um, and here, this is what I was explaining before. If you want to do a bifurcation PCI, you have to be willing to do five pullbacks. So first, you're gonna analyze your diagonal um, uh, morphology and decide your length. So here you see how in the angio registration, um, once you move this, this is your uh, reference, you see this white dot here, this is uh, relating to this cross-sectional imaging. And then uh, if your OCT doesn't have this place, the lumen profile, activate your lumen profile, and here is when you want to play back and forth how to plan your PCI. So for your distal segment, you have to aim for a safe segment to deploy your stent. You have to avoid uh, lipid, microphages infiltration or vulnerable or plaque, otherwise you're gonna have a uh, dissection most likely. And then in your proximal, as you can see here, this is LAD, but here is exactly at the bifurcation side. Um, so uh, we are seeing, this is the ostium of the diagonal. So I think here there is no question. We have to do a double stem bifurcation PCI. The area here is below two millimeters. It's just uh, 1.4. And just make sure for the stem size, if this is the ostium, you have to extend these straps. Like in this case, we decided to do um, DK crash uh, technique. Um, and in this one, make sure you extend uh, comes into the main blood vessel, otherwise you're gonna miss the ostium and you're not really have, you're not gonna really have the struts inside the main vessel to do the crash. So in this case, probably uh, if you have the stents that go to 18, you're gonna use a length of 18, uh, otherwise you rather go to 20 millimeters to make sure you cover the whole segment. Then when you assess the morphology of this diagonal branch, you see some uh, small calcifications that are below 90 degree angle, 
So these, for definition, are microcalcifications, no that concerning to do PCI. And most of the plaque here is fibrotic with some lipidic infiltration, but we are not seeing a calcific nodule. We see here some superficial calcium, again, in less than one quadrant. We are not seeing very complex plaque that is going to require aggressive, um, aggressive uh, devices to, uh, to modify the plaque. Once you do the, these measurements, you are aiming to do an EEL measurements and size your stand based on the EEL. And the EEL uh, is the darker part in between the intima and the adventition. You're aiming to deploy your stand or size your stand based on the EEL, which is the elastic uh, lamina that uh, is in the transition between the media and the adventition. If we look into these uh, numbers here, it's telling you the diagonal is 3.25, 3.22. You do two measurements, and because you're using your EEL to size, you downsize that to the next available stand, which is a 3.0. So for this diagonal, we are going to do a, a 3.0 uh, millimeter uh, stand. So after you assess your diagonal, you go into your uh, LAD which is the main vessel. And again, you do the same. You're seeing here how this white dot is correlating with the cross-sectional imaging in uh, angio registration. As you see here, these images were done in the 75 millimeter full back. And this uh, is easy to achieve a good blood clearance and you don't have much blood contamination. So here you're able to assess exactly what you wanna do. So when you assess your LED, uh, this goes distally, a little bit diffuse disease. So you want to decide a segment that is safe to deploy your stent and you don't go too distal into the vessel if you don't want to put like 50 millimeters of stent. So this is a good, it's very hard to find sometimes a perfect 360 degrees normal uh, vessel architecture. And this is real life. So what we do, for example, here we have some calcification but this calcification is not protruding into the lumen and it's not affecting the minimum lumen area. So deploying a stent in calcium is safer than deploying a stent uh, in lipid plaque. And here we are not expecting dissections, major dissections or complications for deploying the stent here. As you see here again, this is real life. Many times we don't have a perfect a segment to do the EEL measurements. Just try to achieve and just follow the EEL and try to uh, take into account what will be the best EEL to size a uterine. So not only for the distal segment, but then you go to your proximal segment. As I told you before, um, the bifurcations are going to show up as pin dots in the lumen profile. So automatically, I know my side branch is here. Here in the longitudinal view, I see it exactly here. Um, so then I need to have at least eight or 10 millimeters uh, before my side branch to deploy my stent. So uh, here we are, uh, give me one second. So it's around, um, it's at least A. So when you measure uh, from the first segment of this side branch here, you have to have at least eight. And then you have to make sure that in the proximal edge, you don't have significant disease that is gonna drive uh, dissections there. So if I want to deploy my stand around here, I do a measurement that roughly uh, is going into the EL, as you guys can see here. Here is easy to detect. The other side is no is no easy to detect that. So you can also go either by lumen and upsize the size of your hot balloons, or use your um, EEL measurements and downsize if you were able to do a good EEL measurement. So here in this case, we decided to do a photo. Uh, 16 millimeters uh, for the main vessel. And then after you deploy your stents, uh, this is probably the most important pullback doing an OCT in bifurcation. Uh, that is, where is your wire recrossing into the side branch? So here um, you see exactly, and I'm going to show you in a minute when this uh, down low. Um, here we see the stent. Uh, we have some tools in the OCT um, that you are able to see your stent, which is the uh, stent road map. Uh, there are automatic measurements for apposition and expansion. So here you see your stent. This is the main blood vessel. This beautifully reflects uh, the stent struts that were crashed into the LAD. You see more density of struts here in the main blood vessel proximal to the side branch. Um, 
And then automatically, you're going to see your up position, your expansion, these pull back specifically. So as I was saying before, for everybody, for my recrossing, I did the 54 millimeter pullback. Uh, here I see my side branch. Here in the, in the cross-sectional view, I still see my two wires. Here I see how the wire is going into the side branch and uh, eventually disappears in the side branch. So if I use here my tools, I know exactly if this is the uh, side branch, this wire is getting across exactly at the mid to distal strap. And you also have some options for the bifurcation um, PCI uh, here where you see exactly where your wire is getting across your side branch. So you cannot be as confident as you are here to know exactly where this is getting across. So this is what is um, OCT is amazing to do your bifurcation PCIs. Then you are shooting your proximal segment, both wires are in the proximal segment and the wire never runs abluminal the stand because you don't want to crash that proximal segment. So then if you do all of this as you did, you don't have any, any feelings that you're gonna have a bad result. Basically you set up this case for, um, for a perfect PCI. You see it here by angiography, it looks beautiful, uh, expanded and opposed, but then you want to check with this OCT and I'm gonna be done in a minute, I think an overtime already now. Um, so here you see already with the uh, tools that you have, it's gonna assess a uh, expansion and a position automatically. Here you see how beautiful is this diagonal branch and this will be your main branch. Uh, it's just amazing how you, you deploy this thing here inside the main uh, vessel, but the Austin of the diagonal is completely uh, clean and beautiful. When you use this uh, automatic assessment of your expansion is telling you your stent is 91% expanded over 90%. So this is optimal PCI. And here in the Sanjoko registration, you have both. You have expansion if your stent is white, is telling you your straps are well expanded, uh, most of them. And then if you click in here, you see a position a again, your stent is completely white, telling you your straps are below 200 micrometers from the vessel wall. So again, by angiography, you cannot do it this perfectly. And then this is the last LAD um, uh, post PCI that again is very easy to assess just with the tools. I'm gonna wait here for these ones to uh, display. So once you do the procedure with OCT, I think there is not a way to go back because the confidence you have, you did a great job is so high that you're not concerned about like anything else anymore. And sometimes you're aiming to do your kissing balloon and, and the balloons don't go. So you don't even know where the wire got into the side branch. But with these ones, it's amazing here. The expansion is telling you it's 90%. And if you assess here again, your stent is white, is well expanded. Um, your stent is white, is well opposed. So nothing close to OCT to do bifurcation PCI. And then I hope with this one, you also have uh, amazing tools, the 3D. Uh, bifurcation uh, when you see exactly where this one got across and you're able to see your uh, your side branch. And then you also have uh, the fly through option uh, that is like a very fancy uh, navigation tool uh, when you're able to see the struts, uh, the tissue uh, and here in this uh, view and exactly uh, to see how your side branch is getting across the uh, the main vessel and how clean is your uh, carina and your and your side branch osteal stain. So I hope with this, I, I gave you a good message how to use OCT in bifurcation and I'm happy and looking forward to the discussion and the questions that are coming from you. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, thank you, Natalia, very, very uh, excellent talk. It's spectacular, really. Uh, I think uh, the the uh, possibilities uh, of usage of OCT in bifurcation has been brought out excellently well. Now, one of the uh, problems uh, was always the side branch assessment, uh, pre-procedure as well as post-procedure. That has been the challenge in bifurcation. Now, we hear about definition file and found that in at least complex bifurcation of front two strategy may be useful. There may be difference of in, but may be useful. So upfront, the pre-procedural OCT, what are the factors which will help us to say that this case is going to be a two-stand strategy rather than a provisional? Some of them you have mentioned, but I would like to get that particular point focused. Second point is that I found you have made the, uh, the, both the branches pull back, the, uh, the side branch pull back 
and the main branch pull back. This is uh, uh, rather uh, much uh, rarely done in our uh, situation, at least in my lab. We make a main pull back and assessment of the side branch osteum from that. Uh, thinking that, you know, a pull back uh, pre-procedure, you have dilated many a time and then you are committed for the two stents. And second, when you place the main stent and then you do a pullback of the diagonal through the stent strut, but there is some possibility of, you know, uh, deforming the stent struts that. These are some of the concerns. So I found it very nicely done and then you have shown the bifurcation very nicely. So these two points, the upfront strategy of two stent versus single, what are the criteria which you look pre-procedural OCT and then final OCT, how you assess the side branch ostium, how you assess the side branch nicely, because that's very important in the decision of short and long-term outcome of bifurcation PCI. Please. Yeah, thank you for the question. So um, I think in this case, clearly the ostium of the side branch was severely by angiography, but I agree with you that if you're gonna assess your morphology in the side branch and you're planning to do a provisional bifurcation PCI, you, you don't want to have any dissections induced by the catheter, by the wire. You don't want to instrument the side branch uh, before you do it. So I agree with you. You're thinking about doing a provisional bifurcation. And if you had some disease in the side branch and you're not willing to go into a two stent strategy, you are able to assess beautifully, as I was saying, your side branch uh, plaque morphology angle and the, and the tip uh, just by your main branch uh, bifurcation. So if you're doing the main vessel, in this case, the LAD, you are able to assess all of those ones. And I will say, and it's my experience, if you see some calcification at the carina, that's telling you that side branch is gonna be stable because the calcium is actually protecting that side branch for, uh, for uh, be moving the carina after the stent deployment in the main vessel. And also you have a significant fibrotic plaque um, is gonna protect your side branch as well. Probably the most concerning when you have lipidic plaque that is not strong enough to avoid the carina movement uh, is the morphology that is more concerning about side branch uh, compromise. Um, and I agree with you, just by the main vessel PCI, you are able to see the angle, you are able to see the area actually. Um, with the OCT, you're able to see your area is very good in the, in the ostium of the diagonal branch, you're very confident you don't have to instrument that side branch at all. Uh, then in some cases, like in this one, if the side branch is significantly diseased by angiography, um, the chance that that's a branch like a had some complications for PCI uh, are quite high. So um, in a double stent strategy, just decided from before, um, you can do your main blood vessel um, OCT first and taking in account all of this as well. Let's say you really don't want to intervene in the side branch and you see a calcified nodule like that's a branch, you say, okay, I think I'm gonna be fine. So with the confidence that OCT gives you to, to go for one or the other strategy, uh, it's amazing. We don't have that by angiography at all. Then the post PCI, when you're aiming to do a double stent uh, bifurcation uh, PCI, I agree the ostium of the side branch is very important. Either you do provisional or double stent in your main blood vessel um, OCT before, you basically see exactly how the stent struts are playing um, with the side branch. Um, and usually just by putting your stent in the main vessel and doing a good pot dilatation, those struts in the main uh, vessel get displayed into the side branch and it's actually opening the side branch ostium, like we see this all the time. But in these cases, it's very important. You have an important lens to do the pod because while I'm training the fellows and I see some faculty even doing a bifurcation, provisional bifurcation, then after the pot is when the side branch gets affected and it's because they didn't size it well, they only had four or five millimeters. They put an eight millimeter balloon and going at a very high pressure at the carina after the stent deployment. Like there is no calcium or there is nothing that protects that. So that has to be very important at the pot. And I totally agree if you aim for a double stent bifurcation PCI, the area at the ostium of the uh, side branch is very important. That that carina is free of struts or a neo, a very large neo carina uh, totally drives the outcomes in the future. So you gotta make sure you get your wire in the right stent strut and you do, if you're doing a double stent bifurcation PCI that you do a proper kissing and you do a repot. 
And again, OCT helps you to understand if something else needs to be done. Let's say you had a very large neocarina in a tap technique or in another technique, and you're not happy with that, you're able to recross your wire again and just plan a strategy that cleans your carina better. Doing a lot of imaging uh, helps you also to understand how all the techniques in bifurcation work. And in my experience, for example, once I start doing uh, OCT, I basically abandoned the tap technique because every time I did OCT, I saw a very large carina that was in the middle of my side branch and my main vessel. And I was like, I think I'm not gonna do this technique anymore because what I want is a very clear carina from the strat. So uh, the understanding you get from OCT is, is, is completely, actually sometimes it's out of proportion of what you want to see. You see so many details, but honestly, when I do a double stem bifurcation with OCT, it takes me less time for the whole cat lab, my nurses, because I'm so confident deciding the equipment I need that I go faster. And sometimes when you do, don't do imaging, having trouble getting the balloons into the side branch, then you're reflecting like, what am I doing here? Why I didn't do OCT in the first place and size everything right and optimize my procedure right. So I take less time and the most important and super confident I did a good job and that patient is not gonna have outcomes in the future. Recently, I had a patient that I did an LAD bifurcation was actually for the Illumium for trial. So I was very scared. And then he called me in my office, I'm having chest pain, I'm having chest pain. And I did a double stem bifurcation PCI, it was a DK crash. So because it was from the Illumium 4, I reviewed my OCT and I said, my PCI was perfect. Like it's two years from that, but I'm pretty sure this bifurcation is gonna be fine. But the patient pushed so hard that I ended up doing angiography again. And when I saw the angiography two years after, completely beautiful and clean, I said like, this is how the confidence OCT gives you. Thank you. Dr. Sahu, please. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, Bahuli and sir, uh, uh, yeah. we are slightly behind time, but anyhow, uh, it was a very informative uh, keynote lecture. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Natalia, for the same. Uh, now I think we should move on to the next session.